So I got to Chicago, no job. I looked and looked and looked. I was nine weeks pregnant. I'm like, let me quickly get a job before this stomach starts showing. No interview, no job. <sighs> Man, now I know some things I could have done better, but anyway, I did the best I knew then. So I finally had my son, and then I got an opportunity for a short contract. It was supposed to be six weeks. It ended up being three months. So it was very, it was a big downgrade from my, what I was qualified for. But it was something, and it earned me money. In fact, the first time I paid tithes on that job, from that day, I said people who complain about tithes, they are ungrateful. The fact that you can pay time means you have a job. For many months, I would sit down. They would call people to, I couldn't stand up. Why? Because I didn't have a job. Then final God provided something, and I came forward with tithes. Ah. May you not be in a position where you are not able to pay tithes. And if you are right now, may God divide you from it. You know, may God supply you a source of income. Anyways, I said, I can pay tithes. I have income. I have this and stuff. So I was there. I think after a while, the, my boss on that job realized that ah, this girl, she's smarter than what she was hired for. Because I'll quickly finish my work and I'll say what next. So he started giving me his work little by little. He started little. I'll do it. Then gave me more. Gave me more. Ah. Then one day he called me and said, you know, they are moving me to another project. And I w I've told my boss that when they move me, they should put you on this project. So you'll be the one in my position and you will earn what I'm earning. Then told me what he was earning. Ah, that thing entered my eyes. Oh. I said, eh? Really? Ah. Okay. The guy got me. She started giving me all his work to do. That we did, he will be on the phone talking, talking, talking. Go outside, chew tobacco, come back, laugh. Ha, ha, ha. A part of me will be like, look at this man. I'm doing his work. But then I'll be like, ah, there's a promise. I'm taking over his job. I'm taking over his job. First month passed. Second month passed. We entered into the third month. Two weeks to the end of the project, and it finally dawned on me. I'm sure it dawned on you at the beginning of this story. Finally hit me. That this guy just got free labor for himself. Ah, he pained me. I went to ask him again. Say, I'm talking, my mom, like talking to two weeks. We are finishing project in two weeks. So I forced the ambitious part of me, first went to talk to somebody else. The person looked at me like, well, so how is it my business? Then I'm like, God, this guy actually used me, got away with it, and there's nothing I can do about it. And I said, God, you are the one who called me to Chicago to come and start because we're coming to start a job. This is not what you promised me. And so I went to the bathroom to cry. I cried. And the project had to do with shutting down the building. So there weren't many people left in the building. I was practically the only female left in that building. So I knew nobody was coming to the female or female restroom. So I had room to cry. You know the kind of cry you look at yourself in the mirror and you feel sorry for yourself. And you go again, oh my God, see my life now. After many months, out of obedience to you, I just left my career. I left this, took up a job that was beneath me, but yet I was faithful. And this guy used me. God left me. Cry very well. After. He said, wipe your eyes. Go back to your seat and start writing. That was how Career Resources was born. I started writing Wisdom for the Workplace, and I started a magazine called Career Resources. Today, people celebrate Career Resources. But it was born in tears. It was born in tears. It was born at a time when I felt like I left it to follow you. It's not like, and you've not told me I should leave career yet. So you are still keeping me in the career space. But yet, where are your promises? Where are the things you promised? I submit to you today that you may be going through some things right now that you need to consecrate. If you are going to go through it anyway, go through it with the right attitude. Go through it with a consecrated heart. Make sure that it won't be in vain. Make sure that at the end of this, God will be able to use it for something. Make sure that you pick up the wisdom nugget along the way. Because that may be what will create a platform for you. Because then God would have been able to achieve two things. He would have brought you out, but he would have given you a message that he can use to deliver others. Because other people don't have to go through it the same way you did. 
let me tell you something. Pain, I've shared a lot of trouble. Pain, that pain destroy is not the right of passage. It's the wisdom from it that's the right of passage. This wisdom for it is what is benefiting you. It's not the pain. I pain, I struggle. What's your business? It's the wisdom that I can use to communicate some truths that may not seem real to you. It's the simplicity with which I can use to explain spiritual truth that you can find useful and valuable. So if you are going to go through it, come through it with something. But to come through it with something, your heart needs to be right and consecrated to God. That's why I started that with that scripture from James chapter 3 that differentiates a wisdom that is earthly and sensual from a wisdom that is heavenly from above. What's the difference? The condition of the heart. Pay attention to the condition of your heart. Where's my heart? Where's my heart in relative to God, in relation with God? What's my heart attitude towards him? What's my heart's posture towards him? Am I blaming him for everything? How can you hear from the person you are blaming for everything you are going through? You can't hear from him. Am I blaming him for everything? The way my son turned out, the way my daughter turned out, the way my husband turned out, the way my job turned out. The way the, am I blaming him for all this? The way Nigeria is, the way this is, the, the way the person that left me 10 years ago, the person that, am I blaming him for all that? If I am, then I can't hear from him. But am I recognizing that he sees it? He sees me. And he has a good plan for me. And I'm going to listen to him. He will show me the way out. And I will listen to him. He will show me the way out. Or he will show me the way through. Or he will show me the way over. But whatever part I use to get out. I would have picked things from him. That somebody one day will hear me talk about. And call me wise. Let's go ahead and rise up to our feet. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to talk to God. I want you to talk to God. Hallelujah. Go ahead. First of all, you can talk to him in your understanding. And then go ahead and pray in the spirit. I like to, you can look at me real quick. I like to have people talk to God immediately after a message so that whatever it is that God was highlighting to you, you can meet with him over it. Build an altar right where you are at over what he has highlighted to you in this message. Because what you are doing is committing yourself to that word and he will commit himself in help. Whatever decision you make, and commit yourself to he will commit your, himself to helping you to stay true to those words that you are uttering before him this afternoon so I'm going to give you a few moments and everybody everybody must have something you are going to talk to God about everybody make sure your eyes are closed your heads are bowed and talk to God glory to Jesus hallelujah once you are done, start praying in the spirit. Glory be to Jesus. E predoste, e keman, tredostava, a kala di karaba se predusta validia. E predosta validia kote kereba sempre nusta vaka ye kete karaba seta. Le predosta validia kata. There's somebody here. Shame has held you bound for so long. It's kept you in a position, kept you in one place, kept you looking back with no excitement about the future. Shame, maybe over a failure or the other. Shame over words of rejection that were spoken over you. Shame over what you think you should be that you are not yet. 
God wants to help you tonight or this morning in delivering you. He already delivered you in Christ Jesus. But that imprint of shame on your life, the Lord wants to set you free. He wants to set you free from it today. If you are such a person, make your way forward. Don't be ashamed of coming to receive your deliverance this morning. Make your way forward real quickly. We have just a few minutes um, for me to minister to some people here today. Go ahead, make your way forward. Make your way forward. Don't think, oh, what will people think? What will people say? As I've said, the devil will weaponize shame for even the smallest things. So don't worry about what people may think. All people may be speculating about you. Just come forward. Your own is to come receive your deliverance and say no more. No more, no more, no more. I will not be held bound by that, by that experience anymore. No, the devil will not have his way in my life no more. My mind is free. My mind is free. My potentials are free to be expressed in the name of Jesus. Go ahead if you are um, not in front, go ahead, stay in a place in a mode of prayer. You can be praying in the spirit. There's always something to pray about. Go ahead and continue in prayer. And can I have some music help here? Can somebody help me? Oh, Rabba Shepred Oshta. Come and help me. Hallelujah. Mm, we can sing this song. Um, who wrote it again? You say I am loved when I don't. <laughs> Say I am strong when I am strong. You say I am blessed when I am Go ahead if you are in front, go ahead and sing that song and read it from your heart. If you don't know the words, you can pray. Okay, let's sing another song if we don't know the words to that one. That's fine.
we are here under the sound of our voice right now and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior this is your opportunity just come straight to the altar Jesus loves you he died for you and the victory that we are talking about the wisdom we're talking about can only come through Jesus come to him right now if you are there just lift up your right hand and wave it unto the Lord and boldly come to the altar just boldly walk forward and give your life to Christ just do that right now do that right now or you would like to consecrate your life back you would like to rededicate yourself you've gone away you knew you were born again before but you changed and now you want to come back you can make that decision just come straight to the altar as well come right now
Lord this morning. Can we lift up our hands to the Lord this morning and just thank God once again for that awesome word, that awesome session. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the wisdom of God. We thank you for wisdom from the heart, for our specific situations. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the ability to reflect on our journey, reflect on where we are on. In the name of Jesus, to check our heart and to align ourselves with you, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you have been blessed this morning, shout hallelujah. If you know that your life will not be the same again, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, Pastor May, we love you. Pastor May, we love you. Thank you so much for such wonderful insight. Hallelujah. You may have your seats and just get ready your offering. Hallelujah. Powerful, powerful insight. Glory, glory to God. Glory, glory to God. The wisdom comes in those trying times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so let's just open our hearts to God. Open up our hearts to God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says we should bring our tithe and our offering before the Lord and we should prove him. And we will see that it will open the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings that will not have enough room to receive. I want you to package your offering this morning and just wrap it with honor, appreciation and gratitude. Gratitude for the word you just heard. Gratitude for the word you just heard. Gratitude for everything. Gratitude that is in you, is with you. Gratitude for the word. Gratitude for his promises. Father, we give you praise this morning. We give you praise this morning. It's such a honor, it's such a delight for us to bring our offerings, bring our tithes to you, O oh God, to just acknowledge you in our lives and to just honor you for who you are. Father, we give you praise this morning. We worship you, God Almighty. Worship the Lord this morning. You have your tithe, you have your offering. Just worship the Lord with it. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Some of you might even name your offering a wisdom seed. I thank you, Lord, because there's a wisdom for my unique situation and circumstance. And I thank you, Lord, because I received that wisdom. I download that wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Out of my belly flows, I know exactly what to do. I know exactly the next step to take. In the name of Jesus, I will hear a voice behind me saying this is the way walking it. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you praise. We thank you, Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. We want to welcome people that are worshiping with us for the very first time on a Sunday morning like this. Hallelujah. In fact, you had many options on this street. You had many options in Lagos, but even on this street, you had many options, but you chose to fellowship with us. Hallelujah. Can you lift up your hand above your head if this is your first time in this place? Hallelujah. Put your hands together for them. Celebrate them. I can see some hands. Please lift up your hands above your head so that we can see you and God sees you and we love you and we celebrate you and we thank you for coming. Church, rise up and just shower them with the love of God. Show them how you know grateful we are that they came here this morning, that they yielded to God this morning, that they fellowship with us this morning. We love you. We celebrate you. And we thank you 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 so much for coming god bless you and we hope to see you again and again do we have people that are here for the second time this is not your first time but it's your second time can you lift up your hand above your hand? we want to appreciate you especially anybody here for the second time hallelujah put your hand together for my sister over there right at the back over there you're coming here for the second time we love you thank you for coming back anybody coming for the third time anybody here for the third time or the fourth time thank you so much hallelujah put your hands together for mommy at the back i see mommy at the back god sees you god bless you thank you thank you so much you all had options but you chose to be here this morning and we just celebrate you and we celebrate all 
that God has deposited in your heart this morning. And we trust the Lord that the reason a bought will be fulfilled. I believe that the word that has been sown in your heart this morning will bear in mind, it will bear fruit in the name of Jesus Christ. And you will testify, hallelujah, that you came for that meeting furnaces and you were able to get the wisdom you needed for your situation. Hallelujah. Wisdom is from the heart. Glory, glory to God. Glory, glory to God. We gained a lot, you know, when she was talking, answering questions and so on. And even the, the message itself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, some of us, like you said, you're looking for major platforms. And it's in the lessons, in those trying times, that gives you that voice. Hallelujah. That makes you an authentic voice. That makes you someone that somebody will listen to. You know, somebody that will be considered wise. Because when you have to deal with that marital challenge, you allowed the word of God. You allowed God's word to prevail. Hallelujah. You allowed, you yielded your heart to the Lord. You submitted. Even instead of proving your point, instead of insisting on your right, you allowed the word of God in you to dominate you. Hallelujah. You know, all that challenge at the workplace. Hallelujah. You allow the word of God to dominate your heart in that moment. A trying time. Hallelujah. And eventually it becomes, it comes out of wisdom when you begin to look back and reflect and then speak to people. You know, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, I'm somebody just make a prayer of consecration this morning. Say, Heavenly Father, I just consecrate myself to the word of God. The word of God is final authority. Where my life is concerned, I choose to live by the word. I want you to say it loud, I choose to live by the word. I consecrate my heart to the Lord. I choose to live by the word of God. Say whatever the word says, I believe and I do. I act on the word of God. God says it, I believe it, and that settles it for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. Glory, glory to God. And for some, it's all oh, financial challenge. You know, it's just receiving the word of God in that situation and just trusting and believing that word. Hallelujah. And then it gives you your own specific instructions as you spend time with him intimately. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. Is somebody excited? How many of us have been blessed? I mean, it's like uh, Pastor May gave us the behind the scenes. This is... Um, this is why they call me Pastor May, or this is what makes Pastor May, Pastor May. You know, that's my summary of the message. Hallelujah. That my Pastor May that you love so much, this is why she's Pastor May. You know, she went through the same journey. She went through the same hearts. She has also experienced uh, seasons of lack. Hallelujah. She has also experienced shame in one form or the other, but she received the word of God in those trying times. Align ourselves with it. Align ourselves with the word. Allow the word of God to reign in our heart. Engage with the Holy Ghost. And she came out on the other side. Hallelujah. And then when she, you look at her life and look at her journey. Say, oh, this woman was so, is so, so wise. And she says, you are to just get on that journey. Hallelujah. Get on that journey. See, I'm getting on that journey. Hallelujah. Um, those are having exams, um, KT 11, 1 and 3, you have it right after the service. Um, midweek services hold um, Sundays, 9 a.m. And um, Sunday services hold every Sunday, 9 a.m. in this place. And our midweek services hold Thursday every um, 6 p.m. You know, sometimes it's physical, sometimes it's on site. We would um, let you know from time to time. The book of the month. Um, of September is 101 Nuggets for Excellent Living by Dr. Kyle De Gisheson. Please go on the app and read it. You know, I opened this week and I began to read, you know, and quite a number of nuggets that will help you to live an excellent life. So please go ahead and um, get that. Corporate prayers is every day, 6 a.m., and on Saturdays we meet at 8 a.m. 6 a.m. and 9 p.m. We meet every day to pray. Tell your neighbor for me, 6 a.m and 9 p.m. Ask your neighbor, have you been joining the prayers? Have you been joining the prayers? We want to encourage you to join those daily prayers. In the morning, in the evening, you can do morning or evening or do both as God allows you, you know, so but please join us in prayers. And on Saturdays, we meet at 8 a.m. 
on Saturdays, we meet for evangelism. Join the evangelism team. Saturdays, 9 a.m. Hallelujah. Then follow us on our social media handles. How many of us are following us on Instagram yet? Please like our post, comment on the post, share them, and just engage um, with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Katie, I left one student. Your exam will be in the um, Teens Church. And level three, your exam will be in the main church right after the service. Please watch out for um, announcements on the church um, WhatsApp platforms and on the Telegram platforms. How many of us are here to join the Telegram platform? How many of us are here to follow us on Telegram? You know, don't move too much. They won't know I'm talking about you. Okay, so please join the two platforms. The reason we move to Telegram is because more people can engage with us. Tele um, WhatsApp only restricts us to like 32 people when we are praying. But with Telegram, all of us, all our devices can be connected at once. Hallelujah. In fact, yesterday I shared some messages. As I was sharing to um, WhatsApp, well, WhatsApp said my, the, the size was too large. I couldn't share some of the messages. That's why I dropped some on WhatsApp and I dropped the meaning on Telegram. You know, Telegram is more robust. Please engage with us. Download that app. Hallelujah. So we have a session coming up very soon on a School of the Word. It's a Monday on the 16th of September, 2024, and it's a public holiday. Yeah. So the venue is going to be at our Ikeja Church, Carriage Center, on the 16th of September. Tell your neighbor, 16th of September. School of the Word. 16th of September. It's going to be an massive experience in God's Word. It's like the name says, you are going to be schooled in God's Word. Please, make it a date with us. Buses will be provided, you know, for um, transportation, so you don't have an excuse. Then also on the 29th of September, 9 a.m., we are using the LTV Auditorium. We are having music and miracles. Glory to God. Who's excited about that? We're going to have, you know, many amazing ministers in that particular session. And not only that, you know people that are, you know, sick, that are crippled, that have one issue or the other, you know, dealing with um, life-threatening situations and diseases. Just ask them to come for this particular um, program. Invite people in your networks, invite your colleagues at work, your family members, and bring them for this program. It's your opportunity to be an evangelist, like the woman at the well. She went and invited people to the program. Hallelujah. Please go out of your way. Start inviting people. Start telling them ahead. I have a program on the 29th of September. It's music and miracles. You know, you are believing God for miracle intervention of God in any aspect of life. You know, come for that particular meeting. Hallelujah. And I just want to encourage every one of us, especially also to join the school of the word. Sometimes a lot of people want to just come for the miracles. Hallelujah. But the word is what keeps the miracles coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. Hallelujah. The word is what builds you up so that you, even you yourself, you can be a miracle worker. You can make an impact in your generation. How many people like to make a difference in their generation? How many people were impacted through the teaching of pastor this morning? You were really blessed. Hallelujah. It's because she had been in several school of the words. Hallelujah. And she has learned and she has continued to learn in her journey and in her walk with God. So we want to encourage you. Make up your mind. You're not going to be a baby where things of God are concerned. Come for that school. Even if you're a first timer, we invite you for that program. Your life would not be the same again. Can we rise up on our feet? As we bring the service to a close, I want you to just, in one word, begin to bless God this morning. Hallelujah. Just begin to bless the name of the Lord God Almighty for today's service. Let's thank him for the things which was shared. Let's give him glory and praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Heavenly Father, we give you praise and we bless your name. We just want to say thank you from the depths of our hearts. Lord, as we make these declarations, we declare in faith, trusting that there will be manifestations of all that we declare today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's have the creed and then we pray final prayer. Creed. There's a lot that has been done already in church. One of the major crux of Pastor May's message is the fact that the things you are going through 
may actually be what God is going to use to grant you the wisdom you need to be able to succeed in other areas. And I can lay claim to that. We have our own financial situations and everything was there. We learned principles on how to handle money, how to maximize money, how to do several things. And it's those same principles now that we are still applying. But when we were, when we were going through it, it was hard. How to use 500 naira to cook soup. And we did not know because we used to have plenty of money to cook soup. Then 500 naira was all that is in the account. How do you handle it? Learning from that and being able to do that. Now when you have 5 million, you still can cook a good soup that has plenty of value and you're not having to break the bank. So some things you will learn through some of the adversities that we go through. But at the end of the day, are we where we used to be? No. In the same way, at the end of the day, are you where you are right now in the next few days? No. You will be much better. You would have gained the wisdom you need. You would have gotten what you need. So let me see the confession, please. I am King's Word. Can we have that? Thank you. Can we say it together? I am King's Word. I have no taste for mere religion without change. I live a results-oriented, purpose-driven life based on principles in God's Word. I am a person of the world, yielded to the Spirit, and committed to God's purpose for my life. I, I take my place in God's supernatural army and His agenda for the earth and my generation. I will never give up, cave in, quit or die until my job is done and victory is won in Jesus' name. I live a life beyond the ordinary. I am conscious of the blessing. Lines fall before me in pleasant places. The covenant of wealth is activated in my life. So I cannot be broke another day in my life. I talk, walk, live and express the blessing. I take new territories and break new grounds for the kingdom. I do not fear their fear. In fact, I go above and beyond because of my excellent spirit. I am a beacon of hope to this generation. I have the spirit of God in me and I have an unction to function. I am empowered to prosper, excel and succeed in life. I am supernatural and I love this church. Grab a hold of your neighbor right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray every wisdom you ought to enter into for the breakthroughs that you desire, for the transformations you desire, every wisdom you ought to enter into. I pray you will enter into it this week in the name of Jesus. Opportunities will come for wisdom. As you go through various situations, the Lord will open your eyes to see where the opportunities are and you will maximize them in the name of Jesus. In the times of famine that most people are talking about right now, you will see a way of escape in the name of Jesus. You will know what to do, how to do, when to do, where to do, who to do it with this week in the name of Jesus. You will walk in victory throughout in the mighty name of Jesus. You will come back with your testimony of God's goodness and you will be able to sing it truly. He has done me well. He has lifted me. He has set me free. He has intervened. He has made me laugh. You'll be able to see all those things truthfully in Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, we thank you because we are protected, defended, and preserved. No evil befalls anyone here or right here or online. No evil befalls them. No plague comes near their dwelling place. Disaster and calamity is far from each and every one of them. They are shielded, protected, guarded round about, and delivered from wicked and unreasonable men in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because they come back with testimonies of your goodness, of your favor, and of your blessing. In Jesus' my name. And the people of God shouted. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. Hallelujah. For those that have exams, just get yourselves ready. Go to the um, right hall for your exam. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.
God. Please, KTI, one student, your exam venue is in the teenager's church. Please, let's get set so that we can leave on time. KTI, one. Why KTI, three? Your exam holds here in the church auditorium. Please, if you are not writing an exam, kindly help us move towards the back. Shergun, move towards the back. Take your meeting to the back, please, please, so that we can leave on time. KTI 3, your exam will be holding at the right hand, the right wing of the auditorium here. We are starting right away. We are not waiting for anybody. Please, you have five minutes to be at your exam centers. Thank you.